The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone. Welcome along to today's webinar. What will be the last webinar of 2020? How are you all doing today? If we could just do a quick um, usual sound and screen check before we start then. So can you all hear me okay? And can you see my screen? You should be able to see a getting started webinar funnel in Convertry. Great, okay, looks like we are good to go then. So, my name is Dan and I'm going to be taking you through the webinar today. Just so we can get um, put a face to my name, this is me here on our about page and I am usually in our support desk or our Facebook group helping people out with any questions they have with Convertry, whether they're new members, like I'm sure many of you are, or even experienced members who have any questions. Um, that's where I spend most of my time. So hopefully today we can build up your experience with Convertry. So what we're going to do today, I'll just take you through like the layout of the webinar. So to start with, we are going to get you guys um, up to speed with Convertry. So I'm going to go through a whole live um, demo of how to build a lead funnel like you're seeing here. So what it will be is you have this opt-in page where someone can come to your page, enter their details and be taken to a thank you page um, while they've also been added to your autoresponder. And then once they've got to your thank you page, they can download a lead magnet. And after we've done that demo, we'll have a quick Q&A se uh, session. If anyone's got any questions about the demo itself, we'll do that then. And then after that, we'll go on to some of my favorite little tips and tricks in our editor. And then after that, we'll host a more general Q&A session. So if you've got any more questions about Convertry in general, we'll do those at the end. And if you could just save those for the end so we can keep the demo flowing, that would be much appreciated. So before we begin, then I'm just going to ask all of you how familiar you feel you are with Convertry. So from a scale of one to 10, with one being that you've barely looked at the software to 10 being that you are an expert, how well versed do you feel in Convertry? If you could just let me know in the chat box. Okay, we've got quite a few ones, quite a few threes, a five, a four. Yes, yeah, so we've got a really good range of um, levels here. And it is expected that most of you are going to be beginners, as that's why at the end of the day you are here. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll be feeling a lot more confident using Convertry. Okay, so let's get started then. So we're in our funnel and the first thing we want to do is create a page. So we're going to use this blue new page button and that's going to bring up this list of all our templates within the app so you can see we've got loads of templates loads of different niches different style pages but we're not actually going to use one of these today for the demo we're going to create a page from scratch and obviously that is because we want you to see the full process and also it is quite fun just to design your own pages you get a lot more satisfaction I feel from actually building a page from start to finish as opposed to taking something that's you know already been created for you. So we're going to give this page a name and we'll just call it opt-in. And as you can see, we'll go into the editor and this will give us a completely blank slate. So here's our blank canvas. The first thing that we want to do is add our background image so we can start building the page out from there. So on the left hand side here, this is your elements tray. This is where all of the elements that you need are found. And the one we're looking for to start with is image. So as you can see here, we've got this image element so we can click that. And that is going to load up our image modal or the media gallery. And you can see here, this is the list of all the images that I have uploaded into my Convertry account. And I can also upload more by using this blue button here. Now, we do also have a really cool integration with Pixabay. 
So for anyone that doesn't know, Pixabay is basically a stock photo sharing website and they're all free to use. Um, they don't have watermarks on or anything like that. You don't have to pay a subscription and we have a direct integration with them. So if you click on search Pixabay, you can actually search for something um, and it will come straight from their website and you can add that to your convertory page. So if someone wants to just drop like an object or an animal in the chat and we'll have a look and show you guys how it works. So someone said a horse. So we'll have a look for horse. And as you can see here, these images are the ones that you would see if you went to pixbay.com, but you've actually done this through Convertry. So you can add any of these to your page completely free of charge. And all you have to do is search for, you know, the image you're looking for and then choose one. And you just do that by clicking on it. And then if you wanted to add it to your page, you could click select. Now we're not actually going to use this integration today. And the main reason because of that is, as you can see here, the resolution is capped at 1920 by 1280 pixels. And if you want an image that is a lot um, larger than that, you can't actually get that from Pixabay. So you would have to upload that yourself. Now you might think that uploading an image larger than that is going to make your page load a lot slower. But with Convertry, because our page speed loads so fast, you don't actually suffer the same um, result you would as if you were using a large image on another page builder. So with Convertry, you can upload a much larger image size and you'll still get the same loading speed. So for example, we're going to use this image here of the woman. And you can see the resolution is a lot larger than Pixabay would allow. So if we select this one, and then to make it our background, we can use the full width tool, which is the double headed arrows. And then from here, we can reposition it so it fits the page as we like. So I'm going to drag it up and snap it to the top. And then I'm going to drag it down to about here so that it fills the whole page. So you can see here we have our background image. The quality is perfect. And you'll see at the end when we publish our page that the loading speed does not suffer as a result of the higher resolution. So from now, we are going to add our sort of header and footer panels. You can see on our demo page, we've got this border at the top and at the bottom just for more of a stylistic feature. And we can do that easily by just using our panel element. So we can drag it onto our page like so and reposition it to the top. And then again, we can use the full width tool. And that basically means that it goes to each edge of the page. So there's no white space at all around the edges. And then using our drag handles, I can resize it as I like. So we'll have it about this size. And we don't really want it to be this gray color. That's quite a boring color. So we'll change it in the element properties. So you can see the blue button here. This is going to open up the element properties for this selected element. And from here, we have loads of options. We can change the size, the positioning, um, or we can change the background color and even borders, shadows as well. And we're going to go to background now because we want to change the color of it. And we open the color picker. And one of my favorite features of Convertry is this color picker, and I'll show you why that is. Now you can see at the moment it is gray. And if I want to move it and change it, you'll notice that the background color changes as I'm dragging this over. So we start off with gray and we're getting closer and closer to a dark shade of red. And that is showing that on the live page. So as a designer or anyone really that's making pages, that is really useful because you can directly compare one shade to another without having to select one color, wait for it to load and apply the changes, and then go back and select another color. You can do this all live. You're seeing the changes take effect, and I just think that is really useful. So the color we want is gonna be sort of this beigey color, which just adds um, a bit of brightness to the page. like so. Now you'll also notice here you've got these RGB values. So if you wanted to, um, you know, copy this exact color onto another page, for example, you could just highlight this, 
hit control C on your keyboard. And then once you've done that, go into your new page and copy it into this, uh, paste it, sorry, into this box. And that would give you the exact same color. Now, if you wanted to have something with the same color on the same page, luckily we have this clone feature here. And that is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to clone this element. We've got it selected, hit clone, and that makes an exact copy of it for us. So we don't have to worry about, you know, making a new panel and finding the exact same color. Thankfully, Convertry has already done that for us. So we'll drag that down to the bottom. And we've now got our header and our footer as well on the page. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get our form on the page. So we want this blank space here to have a form where users can come and sign up to our mailing list and then be directed to our thank you page where they can download our lead magnet. So again, we're going to be using a panel as the backing for all of the text. And we add that to our page like so. And then we can resize it as well. Now, obviously, we can change this later if we need to. So it doesn't have to be perfect when you first add it. But we'll go with something like this. And now we've got this on the page, we can start adding our text. So we'll drag the text element over to the panel. We want to make sure it's within the panel so that it's contained. So when we move this, once I've typed it out, I'll show you. But when we move it, it will also move the text with it. So we'll type out our headline, which is seven top tips for slimming without starving. And as you can see now, once I select the backing panel, the element within has got these dashed lines, and that just means that it's contained within the panel. So if I start moving it, it also moves the text as well, which is obviously a nice feature if you're building stuff like forms because you don't have to move each element individually. So we'll get the main text added now. And we can copy this from the page here if we want to, but I'm going to type it out so that we can see um, a feature in a moment to do with the text styles. So I'll just get this typed out now. And a lot of people seem to think that I actually have this memorized. And while I have done this webinar quite a few times, I haven't quite managed to remember this whole text section just yet. So I have got it written down next to me. So for those of you who think I have amazing memory, I wish I did, but no, not quite. Okay, so we've got that now on the page, which is important because it does tell our prospect what they're going to be opting in for. So a little bit of information like that, along with the title, will go a long way on your page. And then finally, we just need to add a little prompt so that people know to enter their details. Just so that people know that the form elements that we're about to add in a second are actually supposed to be interacted with. And then finally, we'll add a spam text. This is just a good idea to have on your page just to reassure your prospects that they aren't going to be receiving any spammy emails from you. OK, so now we've got our text on the page. What we want to do is set up our default text styles for this page so that when we next add a text element, um, these are all the same as that. So at the moment, you can see it's set to the default Roboto 16, but we can actually change the default on this page. And we can do that by going into the page modal and going to default text styles. And in here, you can see we've got these three options. Well, four options if you include the hyperlink. We've got paragraph, we've got heading one, heading two, and then finally, we've got hyperlink. So we're going to change the font. And if you just keep an eye on the text behind this um, menu, you'll see that it actually changes as well. 
And that's because the text on the page is set to paragraph. So when I'm updating the paragraph style, it's going to update that as well. So I'll change that to Lato. And if you watch closely, there you can see it has changed. And we'll keep the rest the same, except for the line spacing, which will bump up slightly like so. So all of this now has updated to our paragraph text style, but we obviously want the heading to have its own text style. So we want it to be set as a heading. So we'll go back into our default text styles and we'll go onto our heading. And in here we can choose something slightly different. So we want it to stand out a little bit. So we'll go for a bolder font. Font size, probably 26, 28 is going to do fine. And we'll hit done. And you'll notice this time it hasn't updated, but that's because if we highlight this text, you can see by clicking on more, it's actually set to paragraph still. So if we change it to heading one, you'll see that it updates to match the style. There we go, perfect. So we've now got this on the page as our title, and that is looking a lot different from our main text, which is excellent. So we've got our default text style set up now, and we don't really want the enter your details or the spam text to be the same as this because they are just, you know, added little prompts. What we can do is we can still edit these individually just because they've been set to the default style. It doesn't actually mean you can't change anything about them. So we'll show you now that you can still edit it using the options on this bar here. So we can bring it down to, let's say, 12. And we could even change the color or the font if we wanted to, but we'll keep that the same just so it's consistent. So we'll do that as well for the spam text. Okay, so we've got our text now and you'll notice we've got this space here, which is where our form elements will go. So we want somewhere for our prospects to be able to submit their details and then Click a button which takes them to the thank you page. So we'll go to form elements. We'll go to first name. And then we'll go to email. And finally, we want a submit button as well. We'll just move the text box down so it's not in the way. And you'll notice straight away that these don't match our default text styles. And that's because they are um, controlled individually within the element properties. So if we go to element properties for the first name um, element and then go to um, input properties, you can see placeholders and text styling. And here you can edit the text as well. So if you just wanted it to say name or if you wanted it to say full name, you could do that. We'll keep it as first name um, in this example, though, and then you can change the color. But the main thing we're interested in is the font. And we'll change that to match the style on the page. And then finally, we will change the submit button again, button settings this time, and we can change the label and we are actually going to do that. And we're going to change it to download. And then the font to match our heading, which was Noto Sans. And we can change the weight to bold and bump the font size up just a tad. So it stands out more. And there you can see now we've got our form pretty much completed. We have all the you know elements on the form that we need. But you can see at the moment it's looking a little bit skew with everything's all over the place nothing is really in line and we want to fix that because it doesn't look great does it so to do that you will need to select the backing panel and that is because as i said earlier everything within it is contained so you can see i'm moving it around freely and it's all coming with it so if i apply something to this element then it will also apply it to these elements and what i mean by that is our alignment tools so this button here this um double rectangles and with the drop down arrow this is where you can find our alignment tools and what we want to do is align all of the elements so that they're in the middle of this panel so we can drop down like so and then we can use the center align tool 
And if you watch closely with the text, they will all snap magically into the middle of the panel when I hit this button. There we go, nice and neat now. Bang in the middle and it's looking a lot better already. But finally, we want to space the form out a little bit. So we'll have this a bit higher up and we'll just give this a bit more space as well. And then you can see here, there's quite a big gap that I've just made there. And there's only a small gap between the email and the download. Now we don't really want that to be the case. We want there to be the same amount of distance between all of these elements. So what we can do is shift click on all three of them that selects all of them at once. And then again, we can come up to our alignment tools and this time we can use distribute vertically. And what that will do is it will put an even amount of space in between each element. So once I hit this, you can see now that looks a lot better and email is not crowded up to download and there isn't such a big gap between first name and email. So that's looking a lot neater, a lot smarter, and I'm a lot happier with that as a result. Final thing to do with the form is just make the backing panel look a bit more pleasing to the eye. So we're going to just add a bit of transparency to it. And to do that, we'll go into the background, but this time we won't use the color picker. We'll use this transparency selector on the right. And you can do that by dragging it down and you'll see it's changing. Or you can actually type the value in here as well. So if you wanted it to be 75, you can do that. No problem. Then hit select and that will save your changes. And finally, we'll hit back and go to borders. And then we're going to change the edges so that they're slightly rounded here. Now you can have a different border for each corner if you want to. So let's say you wanted a 25 on the top left and a 25 on the bottom right. You could do that, but we want it to be the exact same for each one. So we can hit this toggle here. And now you can see 25 has been applied to each one of the corners, which is what I'm going to stick with. You know, if you want to change it yourself, you can use the arrows to increase it or you can type it in like I did there. But we're going to stick with 25 as it's a nice subtle border. OK, so we're nearly done with the desktop page. The last thing we need to do with this before editing the mobile or just checking the mobile version is OK, is add our privacy policy. To do that, all we need to do is add a bit of text and we'll put it in the footer. Simply type out privacy policy. And as you can see, our default text style has been applied. Then we can align it to page center. And similarly, we can align the text to the center of the element like so. So we know this is bang in the middle of the page now. And then we just need to highlight the text and using the hyperlink key here, we can now add our link. So I'm just going to add ConvertTree's privacy policy link for the sake of this example. But obviously, if you guys have your own, then feel free to add this link here. And what this basically does is when someone clicks on the hyperlink, they'll be taken to that page. Now, a really important thing when setting something like this up is to use our feature, which allows the page to be opened in a new tab. So when someone clicks on this, you don't want them to come off your sales page altogether. If they want to have a look at it, that's fine, but you want to make sure that it's opening it in a new tab. And the reason for that is because if it doesn't, people might just forget about your sales page. It won't be there on your browser. So as you can see, I've got these tabs here. I'm not going to forget about them because they're already up the top. But if I was to be taken to a new page, I might forget about what I was looking at before. So we want to minimize, you know, the chances that our prospects are getting taken away from our page and getting distracted from our main focal point, which is, you know, to get a sale or to get an opt in. So make sure you've got that selected, open in a new tab that will sort you out in that case. So hit save. And now you can see it's underlined. So anyone can click on this and be taken to the privacy policy. So we're looking pretty good now in terms of our desktop page. I'm pretty happy with that. But before we move on to our thank you page, we need to make sure the mobile page is in good shape as well. So if you come up to the top right, you can see design for at the moment we are in desktop mode. But we want to now switch into mobile. 
So I'll do that now and you'll see the result. And as you can see here, this is what ConvertTree has automatically generated for our page. So you haven't had to do a thing here. This is just the automatic algorithm in play. And it has done a pretty good job, I must say. This is probably what I would say is close to perfect, if not perfect, for a mobile page. You know, it's not um, messed any of the text in the wrong order or the form elements. Nothing's really too big. So I'm pretty happy with that. If for any reason, though, you did want to change something on the mobile page, luckily, that is not a problem. You can just use the mobile editor to do that. And if you watch closely, let's say we want these in the other order. If we go back now to our mobile page, our desktop page, sorry, from the mobile page, you'll see that nothing has changed on the desktop page. And that's really useful because if there is something that you need to change on mobile, you can do that and it doesn't affect the desktop page. So that's a really great feature of the mobile editor. And you'll notice now that I have made a change, we've got this remobilize button. And what that does is, as you can see, it says we want to rerun the automatic mobile conversion. So if we click this button, it will erase any of the changes we've made and put it back to the automatic mobile conversion that ConvertTree has done for us. So we'll save this now. This page is done. And before we set up the form, because we haven't actually connected the form yet, we are going to go and create our thank you page. So we'll leave the editor now. And we are going to make our thank you page. We're not actually going to make a new page, though. We are going to hit the three dot menu and then hit more. And we're going to use the clone feature. And basically the reason for that is if we just give this a name, so we'll call it thank you. As you can see, it's given us an exact copy of our opt-in page. Now, this is similar to using one of our own templates, except the template you're using is the page you've just created. And that's really important because basically it shows you've got congruency through your funnel. So when a user gets to the thank you page, they know that it's the same, um, the right thank you page. They haven't been misled to a completely different page. Or if your page looks completely different, they don't think that they have been misled to a completely different page. So by keeping this sort of consistency, they'll know they're in the right place. So we'll edit the thank you page now. And we haven't got too much to change, but we do need to make some small changes so that it doesn't look exactly the same as our opt-in page. So for starters, we don't need our form elements anymore. We don't need um, to collect any more information. We've already done that on our opt-in page. We'll need to keep the download button as that is where the prospects are going to get the lead magnet from. But we don't need the spam text anymore either or the prompt. And we don't even really need this descriptive text because they've already decided they want to uh, download the lead magnet so they know what they're getting. We'll just keep the um, headline here. And actually, instead of just deleting this, we'll change it slightly. So we'll have it here still, but we'll have it as more of a prompt. So click below to download seven top tips for like so and then we can move our download button up accordingly so that it's not all the way down there on its own and similarly we can shift the panel up as well so we've got now a nicely sized panel So we've changed it now so that it looks more like a thank you page. And the next thing that we're going to do is add our lead magnet, our report, you know, the thing that people are going to be interested in to this download button. So to do that, we're going to select the button and then go into element properties. I'm going to make a slight change purely for design purposes to the button, just so it stands out a little bit from the opt-in page. We'll give it sort of this royal green color and then the main thing though that you need to do is in button settings 
you need to change the mode to download and that will allow you to add a file to the button so that when someone clicks on it they can download the lead magnet so to do that you're going to hit the little folder icon which you know as you can see there it says select file and that is going to bring up your file library similar to the media gallery and as you can see here is the files that I've uploaded and if I wanted to add a new one, I could do that by clicking the button here, but obviously I've already got it ready. And one important thing to note is that individual files are limited to 40 megabytes. So that means the maximum file you can upload is 40 megabytes in size. Now, for anyone wondering what if I've got one that's, you know, 45 or 50, that is entirely possible. You might have a pretty hefty ebook that you're giving away. What you can do is instead of changing the mode to download, you can change it to link and then you can have your lead magnet self-hosted somewhere like Amazon S3 is probably my recommendation. And then you can get that link and put it straight in here. And when someone clicks on the button, it will take them to that link where they can then download the file. So you won't be able to have it hosted in Convertry, but you can get it hosted somewhere else and you can still use Convertry's buttons to actually get your prospect there. But in this case, we don't need to do that. We can just add it as a file like so. So you can see now this is all ready to go. And we can leave, you've got force download on click option here. We can leave that off um, because I mean, it's personal preference. I wouldn't say it's as you know pressing as the tab one, but it's up to you really. This just means that if someone clicks this and we leave it off, it will take them to a new browser where the file will then display. So for example, this is a PDF. It will take them to a new tab and the PDF will just open. Whereas if we had force download on click, it would automatically download straight to their computer. Again, that one is more personal preference though. So we'll leave that off in this example. OK, now we are pretty much done with our thank you page now. Um, we can see here in mobile, you know, it's looking pretty good. We might want to just um, make this a little bit bigger. So we'll hold shift and drag the background down and then we can move this to more of the middle of the page. Because we don't want it to just be blank at the bottom. So by doing that. We can make sure and you can see there the snap lines tell me that I'm in the middle of that image and that looks now a lot better so we'll save that and we will actually now publish this page and we're going to publish it to the path thank you and that is the path after your domain after the and that's going to now be your URL hit publish and we can now go back to our opt-in page and configure our form so that when someone does enter their information, they will be added to your autoresponder. Now, before we go back into the opt-in page, one important thing to do is use this arrow here. So you can see it says new arrow. If we hold it and drag it, it brings this arrow out like so. If we just let it go over the thank you page, you can see these are now connected. These pages are connected. Now, you're still going to need to wire them up within the form, but I'll show you what this has done for us. So if we go back into our opt in page, I'll show you why that's important. OK, so now we need to set up our form. We'll click forms in the top menu. And you can see here we've got a list of all the autoresponders that we have integrations with. Quite a good choice here, but my um, preference is MailChimp. So I'm going to use that and then select my target. And this is the list that I've set up in MailChimp. And once I've done that, you can see here I've got these fields first name this is the one that's on my page and the type is first name and the same for email now with mailchimp email is actually a fixed field so you have to have an input field for email if you're using mailchimp the rest are optional and we only have first name 
Now the type will show you how to set this up on ConvertTree's page in a second, but it's important that the type in the form modal that you're seeing here matches the type on the page because without that ConvertTree doesn't know to pass the information into that box. So therefore your information isn't going to get passed to your autoresponder if the type isn't matching. So we'll hit next. And this is where you can see that arrow that we set up before coming back to our opt-in page has come in handy. So it's automatically filled in here my um, thank you page URL and it's from the suggestions and obviously this has just saved us time because we haven't had to type out the URL um, ourselves we've just had it done for us which is you know a good time saver and also saves you having to remember the URL which can sometimes be a pain in the backside so we'll use that and we want it to redirect so we won't toggle this we will keep that off because we want it to redirect and we'll hit done. And now if we go to our form elements, you can see the tags, uh, the, the type, sorry, that I was after referring to. If we go to form field settings, here is the assigned field type and it's set to first name already, which is good because that's what it's set to in our form menu. And the same with email. And we've got the option here to set these as required or not. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll set that as required. And that means that someone won't be able to submit our form without entering this information. So I would definitely have that on for email because obviously the aim of the game is to get an email so that you can add it to your emailing list. Um, but the, the name one is a is a preference. I would have it as required just because if you can collect names as well, you know, you're going to be able to be more personable with your emails um, and know your customers a little bit better. But that one is really a preference. OK, so we're going to publish this now. We are all ready to have it live. So we'll save it and then publish and we'll just call it opt in. And once that has done. If we click view page here, that is now live on the web. You can see just how quick it loaded there. And if you remember all the way back to the start when we spoke about images and the high resolution, you saw there how quick it loaded, even with this really high resolution image. So that is a great plus and a bonus, obviously, for us because we're not being penalized for using such high quality images. OK, so that is the demo done now, guys. Does anyone have any questions regarding the demo um, itself? Anything they'd like me to go over again? As I said, if you've got more general questions about ConvertTree, save those for the end if that is OK, just because we'll go on to the editor um, tips and tricks next, and then we'll cover those more general questions at the end. So I'll just give you a moment if you've got any questions to get those in. OK, so I can see we've had a couple of people asking if there's going to be a recording. And yet, yeah, don't worry, guys, there will be a recording. Um, if I show you our knowledge base here um, on getting started webinars. So this is help.convertry.com. I'll put this in the chat so you guys have got it, which I would recommend checking this out after the webinar. It's a really useful knowledge base. We have loads of help articles and help videos. We're constantly updating it with new features that come out. And it's going to be really helpful if you guys are trying to build your own pages out and you're just getting started. So definitely check that out um, here in our getting started webinar section. You can see we've got a lot of posts and these are the replays um, of all the previous webinars and they're added to our YouTube channel as well. But if you come here, you'll get the video direct. So don't worry, it's been recorded. It will probably be up, um, I'd say Monday, um, latest Tuesday, but we try and get it up on Monday. So if you want to check back on Monday, you'll be able to see the replay here.
And let's have a look at the other questions now before we move on. Um, Rick's asking how come he doesn't have the Lato font. Um, I'm not actually sure. That should be a default font in all the Convertry accounts. So if you haven't got Lato um, and you want to use it, just drop us an email um, at support at Convertry.com. I will put that in the chat now. And this is our you know, help desk, guys. So if you want to ask any questions after the show, feel free to email us here. Um, but yeah, we can have a look at that for you and see why you haven't got the access to that, Rick, because I'm sure you should. And last couple before we move on, then let's see. Um, so Karina's asked if we can have moving backgrounds. Um, you can have background videos. We don't support animation within Convertry, but if you had a background video, we have um, under our media elements on the left, you can see here background video. And if you add that to your page, you would then just need to have your um, URL of the self-hosted MP4 video file, which is important to note. Um, you can add that here. So you need to have it hosted somewhere. Again, Amazon S3, probably my recommendation. And then you can even set up a preview image if you wanted to. Um, but you can have that um, on the page, no problem, as like a background image if you wanted something that was moving. And we can go to Anne's question next. And she's asking how we can rename a page. So let's see. I think this is what you mean, Anne. Um, if I am right, if you want to rename the page card here, you can do that by hitting the three dot menu, clicking on more, and then you've got a rename option here. And you can just name it to anything you want like so and that is that is pretty much only for your use it's not going to affect the page's name on google or anything like that that's pretty much for your own use but yeah if you use this little menu here that gives you those options no worries and finally before we move on then um demetrius is asking about gdpr compliance now we do have um, like a built in layer for that, which has like um, a cookie pop up. So it asks um, if you want to accept the fact that you're going to be getting cookies. So if you go into layers, probably was a bit too quick there. Let's go back and show you that again. So layers here. And then this will bring up the layer menu. If you go to convert tree layers, we've got loads in here, guys, of built in layers. So if you want to just test, like do an opt in test or get used to the software a bit. We've got even opt-in forms here um, if you don't want to build your own out straight away. Um, but this one we're interested in is the GDPR footer. So we can click on that and add it to our page. We can name the layer anything we want. It's given us this name, which is probably sensible just so we know what it is. And then as you can see here, this site uses cookies to enhance your user experience. By continuing to use this site, you are giving your consent for us to set cookies and then they can click accept and this will then go away. So we've got that built in there for you. OK, so we're going to move on now to the last bit of the webinar, which is this editor tips and tricks section. And in this section, I'm basically going to show you some little shortcuts, some um, I guess you could call them hacks that will save you time using the Convertry editor. And they're just going to make things really easy for when you're getting started with Convertry. Um, I know how hard it can be to use a new software. I mean, when I first started using Convertry, I was a bit confused as well because, you know, it is confusing to start a new software. Every software is different. So I'm going to give you these tips and they'll get you on your way to becoming an expert at Convertry. So if we go into this page, this is just a page template. So it is one that we've created for you to use. Now, there are a few things wrong with it, which has been done on purpose so that I can show you this as an example. But they mainly concern the mobile algorithm and how the page looks on mobile, because that is what I'm going to show you as well. How to build a page that converts well on the mobile editor, because, you know, mobile traffic these days, it is really important. Um, 
a lot of traffic now is on mobile. So you, if you don't have a page that looks good on mobile as well, you're going to be losing a lot of traffic, a lot of prospects. So you need to have both of them looking as good as possible. And if you're building a page in the desktop mode that then when you go to mobile, it hasn't made it well, the algorithm hasn't converted it well, then you're going to be wasting a lot of time really, because you're going to have to do a lot of manual changes where if you built the page out, um, following the sort of steps that I'll show you shortly, it's going to save you time because Convertry will read it better and it will then generate the mobile page better as well. So to get started though, the first thing that we'll do is we want to turn on element outlines. Now I haven't been using them so far because I can really do it without using them, but I would definitely recommend you turning them on when you're first starting. It's this display button here and then element outlines. You can click the toggle so that it goes to a blue tick. And now you can see all the elements on the page have got these hot pink outlines around them. And what that basically tells you is it shows you where the element starts and finishes. So at the moment, if I click here, I won't be selecting the pastry text. As soon as I go into it, I'm selecting the text. So that's just useful because one, it tells you where you need to click to select an element. Also, if you lose an element, an element when you're building a page, which believe me, it can happen. It might sound silly, but elements can get lost, you know, behind or in front of one another, especially if they're just like a transparent panel like these ones here. You can see it's white, but we have actually got the panel. It shows us that because the element outlines are there. So I'd recommend using that. Um, that's going to make your life easier in the editor for sure. And it's also going to make your life easier when you're trying to delete stuff. And that is what I'm going to show you now, how to delete a section of a page. So let's take this menu section as an example. Let's say for the sake of this example, we don't want the menu section here anymore. We, we just don't need it on the page. So instead of clicking each element like so and deleting them all, we can actually just select the background panel. And as I showed you earlier, the elements within this are contained in the panel. So if I delete this panel now, everything within it will also go as well. So I can either hit our delete selected tool or just hit delete on my keyboard and everything has now gone. That section has been completely removed from the page. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't want all this white space here that that looks pretty stupid and you'd be right in thinking that so that is why we put in this clear white space above tool and that is the next sort of shortcut that I will show you how to use it's pretty simple all you need to do is select the element below the white space so in this case it's our panel I've selected that I now click remove white space above and that is going to move the page the whole page up to the nearest above element. So it's snapped it to that element now. All that white space we had is gone, which is obviously great because if you do want to remove a section, you don't want to have to move each element up individually to clear that space. With that feature, you can just do one click of a button and it does it all for you. The page has all shifted up. But you may actually want to make space on a page. You might not always want to be removing stuff or clearing white space. You may use a template or even come to edit a page you've already built and think, you know what, I need to add something in the middle of that. So to do that, to make space, again, you're going to select the element that you want to move down. But instead of having to move them all individually and then, you know, move everything below it individually, if you just hold shift on your keyboard and then start dragging it down like so, you can see not only is everything within this panel moving, but if I scroll down the page, everything below it has also been nudged down as well. And this is especially useful on, you know, quite a big page like this with loads of individual elements because you don't have to move all of them at once. That would take an age. With this feature, you can get that all done in, you know, a couple of seconds, just using the shift key and then moving the element itself. Okay, on to the next shortcut, which is another keyboard shortcut. This one, is something that we've already seen in action, but this involves cloning elements. Now, the reason why I want to show you this, because we do have the clone button up here, but it can take a while if you're 
a bit lazy like me when designing pages or you know you just don't want to have to go all the way up to the top like so so say you've got an element at the bottom but you want to clone it you can hold alt select it and then drag it like so and that is just a lot smooth a lot smoother way of doing it in my opinion you know you've got your cloned element like so you haven't had to click each one go up to the top come back click it go back to the top etc which can become quite tedious instead you've just held down alt while selecting the element and dragged it along and it's given you these cloned versions now this is going to give me a chance to show off um, some more of our um, alignment tools which is the final thing that i'm going to show you within the editor before we move on to talking about mobile and if we add a backing panel so that all these images are contained i will show you exactly the guideline uh, the alignment tools that i mean so let's just do it like so we'll then send this but to the back it's important that any panels that you're wanting to use to contain elements are sent to the back so you can do that with our reordering tools up here so if we send it backwards all the way like that you can either do it by clicking which is going to take you longer it's probably easier to send it all the way to the back and then bring it forward but you get the same result and now it, it's containing all of these which means we can use our alignment tools again similar to on our opt-in page so if we come up to again this drop down menu hit drop down and this time we're going to choose middle align and that will basically put all of these in the middle like so and then finally similar to our form we're going to justify them horizontally and that will put an even amount of space in between each one like so so let's just say i mean for example this could be you know these could be social media icons um, or you know little logos that you want to have out laid out in um, a nice neat fashion and that has allowed you to do that like so okay so last thing then before we wrap up today guys is probably the most important thing that i'm going to talk to you about in today's webinar so pay close attention from now on i mean hopefully you are anyway but if not then i'd pay close attention now so it is to do with our mobile editor and the mobile algorithm that generates the mobile version of our page so if we take this page for example it looks you know well designed it's it's nice and neatly laid out it's all in order nothing scruffy and you can see here we've got the text and it's easy to know what you're talking about but if we go to mobile you can see that actually if we go all the way back up to the top in this case you can see here we've got the three titles one after the other and then the text one after the other so it's not the same as desktop where we have it as the bread and then the information about the bread and the same for pastry and coffee instead these are grouped together but that doesn't make for good reading for our users because they're going to want to read about you know in this case bread but to do that they then have to go oh pastry coffee and then the information's there you can see where i'm coming from in that regard that it doesn't look quite right and the reason for this is because convertry's mobile algorithm has read the page as follows so it reads elements in order that they are added to the page so in this case the backing panel that i'm selecting right now is first then it goes from left to right and imagine you know it's scanning the page and then adding the elements onto the mobile editor so it hits the logo first then it comes along and hits the we are open and then it goes to the image but then it goes bread pastry and coffee and as you can see that results in this so bread comes first then pastry and then coffee and you know convertry's done its job but the page has been built in a way that it's made the mobile version look a little bit unorganized and we can do something to fix that and this is important to remember for any pages that you design in the future so it's using our panels and it's really simple to do all you need to do is make sure that these two elements that you want to display together are contained within a background panel so drag the panel onto the page as you've seen me do many times now in this webinar resize it so it contains the elements that you want to be contained together and then just like with the images a moment ago we'll use the uh, reordering tool so we'll send it to the back and we'll bring it forward a touch so that it is behind the bread and the text 
and we'll do exactly the same for pastry and coffee. Like so. For some reason I'm having trouble resizing it. There we go. And then center back, bring that forward, and lastly the coffee. And now these are all contained within their individual panels. So if I go to the mobile version of the page now, you'll see that it's updated. So these are displayed exactly how we want them. Now it's a lot easier for our prospects to read about bread. They don't have to think, well, where is this text? It's been put with the right title. And that is all down to the containment that we have just set up. So. Bear that in mind, guys, when you're building out your sites, it is really useful. It's going to make you know using the mobile page um, editor a lot easier you won't have to manually change this um, which we would have had to do if i didn't add the panels we'd have had to reorder it ourselves which is going to cost you time and you know it's just unnecessary when you've got the feature there to use you may as well make advance uh, take advantage of it so that is going to conclude the demo and the um, editor section now guys so bring us to an end if you've got any questions, now is the time to ask them and we'll go through and address those before we close out the show. So I'll give you guys a moment again to ask any questions that you have and then I'll get those answered to the best of my ability. Thank you, Karina. It's great to know that, you know, it's easy to follow. I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. You're welcome, Ant. It's great again to see people are enjoying it and also finding it, you know, useful and easy to follow. You're welcome, Antonio. OK, so we've got a question. And it's from Dimitri and he's asking, how do we import another site now? In this case, you do need to have our page importer feature, which you can purchase as an add on. Um, if you want to have that, you'd need to email in support at convertry.com. I've obviously got that on my account, so I can show you it. So I will do that now. And it's pretty simple. You simply click on um, the funnel that you want to import the page to click on import page. And then instead of using the share code, you're going to import from an external URL. Now, not every page is going to import perfectly. I do need to just let you guys know that as a bit of a disclaimer. And obviously we can't control this because the pages are not in our control. So Convertry's importer does the best it can with what it's given, but we have no control over it really. So it won't import every page perfectly, but it is a really useful feature if you're transitioning from one funnel builder to another. We've tested it out with a lot of other funnel builders and they do for the most part import pretty much um, perfectly, but we can't obviously account for any small errors. But one important thing to note as well is that you do have to have permission to import the page or, you know, you have to have created the page yourself. If not, you would be breaking our terms of service. But if you do have the permission to do so, all you need to do is add the URL in here and then it would import the page itself. I hope that answered that for you, Dimitri. And you're welcome, Steve. No problem. And Antonio's asking, do you need to have a domain or can you use the Convertry domain? OK, so that is a good question. You'll notice um, on my page, I have, you know, my name dot Convertry dot com, which is a Convertry subdomain. And I'll show you how to set one of those up now. But you can also have your own custom domain. So let's say you wanted to have the Convertry one. This one would be add a new subdomain. You simply click add and make sure you've got convertry selected from the drop down and then you just add in your um, URL. So let's just say example, that's probably taken, but we'll add click that and that would add it. If you wanted to add a custom domain, then you simply use this one here, which is use convertry with a new domain. You'd need to go and purchase it from a domain registrar somewhere like um, GoDaddy. 
um, or name cheap is another one I believe and then once you've done that you need to add it here now I can't unfortunately show you the whole setup just because it takes um, a bit of a while for the changes to take place and all the name servers to change over and all the technical bits but what I can do is I can get you our help guide um, so custom domains start here again this is from our knowledge base so I definitely recommend checking that out I'll drop this link in the chat and that will show you how to set up a custom domain in Convertry. Hope that answered your question there, Antonio. And that's that's good, Dimitri. I'm glad that we got that sorted for you. Great. Okay. Any more questions then from anyone before we wrap up? Antonio's asking about the uh, the middle option here. Yeah, so if you've got, you know, a um, domain somewhere else and you wanted to have a Convertory page um, hosted on it as well. So let's say you had a blog, then you could add your domain here and then you can add a Convertory page to uh, as a subdomain on that page. Now, I'm going to refer you to the guide because it is quite complex and I haven't got the time to go through it entirely here. But it is basically referring to if you already have pages on um, a website outside of Convertory and then you want to publish a page on a subdomain of that site with Convertory. Again, I've dropped that in the uh, chat for you all there if you want to have a read through that. No problem. Okay, it looks like we are all done then with the questions. If you guys do think of anything, you know, after the show, then do be sure to get in contact with us, support at Convertory.com, or you can join our Facebook group. If you search Convertory Clubhouse on Facebook, you'll be able to join. We approve everyone um, each morning. So if you do it tonight, we'll, we'll get you in next morning. And there's loads of people in there that are willing to help. We have staff members in there. We have um, power users. And there's loads of people on hand, pretty much 24 seven to help you with any questions you've got. Okay, so on that note then guys, I wanna thank you all for coming along. I've thoroughly enjoyed your company and I hope you found this useful. And also as this is the last webinar of the new of the year, um, so of 2020, hopefully 2021 is a little bit better and I wanna wish all of you guys happy holidays and a happy new year to you and all of your families as well. And I hope to see you all again in the new year. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Have a good one, everyone. Okay. Thanks a lot for coming, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheers.